Hey, what's up guys? Cookie here. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you guys a bit of a tutorial of how to download mods for Star Wars Battlefront 2. A lot of people have been asking us how we do it and how other people have been doing it and we are going to show you. It's a semi-complicated process so uh, I'll try and give as much detail as possible. Uh, make sure of course as always to hit up the comments if you guys still don't understand any part of it. Um, but where everything starts is with the Frosty Mod Manager. There's a link to this in the description. Uh, to get you on the page that I am currently on uh, but this is the most important step in all honesty uh, because it's very important that you use uh, specifically the frosty mod manager as it's made specifically to work with Star Wars Battlefront 2 uh, so as you can see there's a couple options of things to download on here a couple of this a couple of these things are actually kind of cool uh, but that's not the point at the moment although if you are a modder uh, there is an editor option for you but most of you probably aren't and I know I'm not so I'm going to just go ahead and download the mod manager Manager. This is the one you need, so go ahead and press the big green download button. It'll pop in at the bottom of the screen as a RAR file. Frosty Mod Manager v1.03.1.rar. So go ahead and click on that at the bottom. Now I have the unzipping software 7-zip. Um, some people may not have any issue with unzipping. Some of you may need to download an unzipping software. So I'm going to show you how to do that. There's a timestamp in the description if this is not a problem so you can skip ahead. I'm going to go ahead and show people what you do uh, to be able to unzip things the right way. Uh, because it's going to be a file that needs to be unzipped. So what you need to do if you don't have unzipping software. And the way to really know that is if you click on the file and you don't get anywhere. Uh, then you know you need some sort of unzipping software if you don't see something uh, sort of like this screen. To unzip files, uh, what I use is 7-zip. It'll be just 7-zip.org. We'll have a link to this in the description as well. You'll see a page that looks kind of like this. And this is for uh, Windows. If you're having issues with the Mac, I usually don't think Mac needs uh, unzipping softwares added on um, but if you still aren't able to open it because of an unzipping problem let us know and we might be able to find an unzipping software for you for the Mac but this is specifically just for Windows uh, PCs so you go here and what you're going to want to do is download the Windows extension 32-bit by 86 uh, 64 bit may work as well but I use 32 so just go ahead and download that it'll download real quick and then you click on the file You'll probably get a message like this. It says, do you want to allow this uh, app to make changes to your device? And you just tell it yes. It'll ask for a destination folder for the 7-zip application. You can put this really wherever you want. Uh, program files, uh, x86 is probably the best place under the C drive, which is its automatic place. So usually you're just going to want to press install and not have to mess with it. Um, but in case you do want to put it in a specific file, uh, you would go into here and look for the file you want to put it in, but more than likely, you're just going to want to put it in the default spot. So we're going to go ahead and install, and it is installed. Uh, that's all you have to do. Now, I think for mine, because I already have 7-zip, it just installed automatically, and I didn't have to worry about it. You're probably going to have to restart your computer uh, to, to download the 7-zip software. So just go ahead and do that, and then once your computer's restarted, you should have the 7-zip option for unzipping files. All right, so once you have all these files unzipped, uh, it should look something familiar or something kind of like this, uh, more or less, with files that look like this. If it doesn't, not sure what to tell you, but hopefully it looks something like this. Um, there'll be this little extract button if you are using 7-zip. If not, um, find uh, whatever button you need to extract the files and go ahead and press that and where you're going to want to extract them is really up to you I only have a couple options I usually choose the desktop as the best place to extract my files so I'm gonna go ahead and do that if you extract it to the f uh, to the desktop like I did you should have something that looks like this all these different things all over the place the important one is the one that looks kind of Cool looking I guess or it looks better looking this is M2 uh, if you uh, depending on your antivirus software you might have this little shield on it just ignore that for the time being now when you open this there's a couple different things you could do but probably the best thing to do is go to properties first um, and then go to compatibility and make sure that the button for run this program as an administrator is checked because your antivirus software isn't going to like this program uh, but there is nothing to worry about it's not a dangerous program it's just that uh, windows defender and other antivirus software just doesn't recognize it right so 
Anyway, so go to that. Make sure you run this as administrator so it works. Uh, once again, it'll ask if you want to allow this app to make changes. Go ahead and say yes. And it'll say choose game executable. Now this is another important part that's a little bit complicated. Uh, for this, you need to find the Star Wars Battlefront 2 file. Uh, there's a couple different places it could be, uh, but it should be, it should just be in this area I'm about to show you. First, go to your C drive, uh, wherever that is. And then once you go to your C drive, make sure you go to Program Files x86. Not the normal Program Files. Go to Program Files x86. Double click. And then go down to Origin Games. Not Origin. Uh, not the Origin folder, but to Origin Games. Double click on that. Now, as you can see, and this might confuse the crap out of some of you people, but my Star Wars Battlefront 2 is not in here uh, because I had actually chosen to, t to put it in a different place when I uh, installed Star Wars Battlefront 2. For almost all of you, it will be in here though. And you'll see, and I'll show you what the file looks like in a second. But I wanted to show you guys where most of you should find Star Wars Battlefront 2. I only have The Sims 4 in here. Uh, that's just because I decided to install mine in a different place. But more than likely, this is where you should find the Star Wars Battlefront 2 folder. I actually have it in my D drive. And what, what you're going to find is a folder that says Star Wars Battlefront 2. So just click on that. And then in that folder, you should have something that says Star Wars Battlefront II with the Star Wars Battlefront 2 uh, little picture here. You also have one that says Star Wars Battlefront II underscore trial. Uh, ignore that one for the time being. What you want is this one. So what you're going to do is click on that and press open. And basically what that does is it allows Frosty Mod Manager to automatically connect to Star Wars Battlefront 2. So it needs that file, the .exe file. So make sure any file uh, for Star Wars Battlefront 2 that you're trying to directly link to Frosty Mod Manager has to be the .exe file. Um, and like I said, it should more than likely be in your program files x86 folder. If it's anywhere else, I don't really know what to tell you. That just depends on where you installed. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2. All right, so what you do now is install your mods and how you do that uh, has, has a couple different ways you can do it. There's only two places I've really found uh, most of most of the mods for Star Wars Battlefront 2, so I'm going to show you those two places. Okay, so here's the two places where you can get uh, a majority of the Star Wars Battlefront 2 mods. I'm sure there's probably some other places you could get it too, but these are the two that I'm aware of and where we've gotten all of our Star Wars Battlefront 2 mods. One of them is in Nexus Mods. We'll have the links to both of these in the description, by the way. Um, but the one is the Nexus Mods for Star Wars Battlefront 2 2017. Make sure it says 2017 because there's tons of mods for the 2005 version. There's also a good bit of mods for the 2015 Star Wars Battlefront. Um, so if you see Star Wars Battlefront 2 2017, that's the confirmation that you are in the right spot. All right, so as you can see, there's just a bunch of random uh, mods in here, uh, some of which we've had actually on the channel. So let's uh, let's see, which one do I want to add for right now? Let, let's go with the most popular one, the Mr. 57's Better Sabers. So I'm going to go ahead and, and go to download this. Now, to download stuff in Nexus, you click on it, it'll take you to a screen that looks like this. Uh, a couple different things that you're going to want to actually look at. Um, you may want to look at the post, because sometimes the post will say, hey, this doesn't work. <laughs> so that could be... Uh, that could be important <laughs> moving forward, but generally, the more downloads something has, and this has 1,108, so that, that's a pretty good confirmation that this is a good mod. The more popular the mod, the more likely it is that it actually works. So there's some, there's some things like that that you want to pay attention to. The description sometimes is very important because sometimes the description will tell you if it has specific instructions for this mod, whether you need to do a certain extra thing uh, or if it's a normal uh, mod change it also tells you uh, what the mod does so this one doesn't have any specific descriptions on that part now where you go to actually download the mod is in the files part of the folder so click on that as you can see there's a, there's a couple different versions this mod specifically has older versions and then the most updated version as you can see it tells you the version of the mod right there and the date when it was updated. So this is the most updated version of Mr. 57's Better Sabers. So I'm going to click on this link and it'll go right ahead and download it. Don't worry about uh, this part. This just tells you uh, kind of what it's doing. Okay, so I've got this download. It says Mr. 57's Better Sabers.zip and that'll go straight into my downloads folder. Now let's go back to the Frosty Mod Manager. We're back in Frosty Mod Manager, and what we're going to want to do is go to Import Mods from File. So we're going to click on that. 
And like I said, these are all going to be in your downloads folder. So this is on my downloads folder. Mr. 57's Better Savers is here. As you can see, I got a ton of crap in here. Uh, your, your stuff shouldn't look quite that unorganized. So anyway, go to Mr. 57's Better Savers. Uh, double click on that. And there it is. And it automatically installs. You shouldn't have to worry about any kind of unzipping. Uh, if you guys are worrying, if it is telling you to unzip files and stuff to get it into Frosty Mod Manager, there's a good chance you probably uh, missed a step, did something wrong, or there's an extra problem with a. Uh, with yours that I don't necessarily know about. So anyway, it should look something like this. And uh, depending on the mod, it might have a detailed description over here. It might not. It just depends on whether the modder decided to put that in there or not. Uh, but that's the description tab. The affected files will show you down here. You don't really have to worry about that. It just tells you exactly which files in Star Wars Battlefront 2 that it is uh, that it's changing around. <clears throat> that's the description. What you want to do is go to the Applied Mods tab right here. So click on that. And as you can see, there's nothing in here. This shows you where which mods are actually active in the game. And of course, at the moment, I have none. So to make any mod active, all you have to do is double click on the mod on this side. Just because it's on this side does not mean it is actually in your game. It just means it has the option to be in your game. So what we're going to do is go ahead and double click. And there it is. Now you can check and uncheck this. And of course, whether it's checked or not, depends on whether it'll actually be in the game or not um, it's very good to have this option because there's a, for one there's a lot of mods that don't necessarily work together and it's really really important to make sure that you don't have two mods that uh, directly contradict each other now you'll see that in the mod descriptions a lot of the time a lot of the time they'll say hey this this doesn't work with this mod or or something like that or you might just find out as you're using the mod that it doesn't work with a certain mod. You might figure that out for yourself. Having this check uncheck option is really, really important for that kind of stuff. So you're not necessarily going to want to have 58 mods on this page all checked because they're probably going to contradict at some point with each other. So another option is you could just uh, have this clicked and go ahead and press apply mods if you want to do it that way but either way it'll work and if you want to get rid of the mod entirely from applied mods you just press the x over here and it removes the mod completely um but a better way is usually just to uncheck it so anyway that gives us mr 57's better savers i'm going to add a bunch of other stuff and you can basically mass add this kind of stuff see i've got all this random crap i'm going to go ahead and just throw all of that in there i'm going to go ahead and do that because I do want to show you something else that'll happen often. So as you can see, it's it's throwing all these mods in there. Now sometimes it'll say something like this, um, which means something didn't go right with the mod. More than likely, this isn't your fault. It's it's usually the mod is messed up and it, it just doesn't extract right. This is a different problem. It depends on which mod um, made that happen. Um, but sometimes this will happen. And I don't know exactly how you can fix that for certain mods. It's usually just a problem with the modder themselves. And it probably means that there's an extra part to, um, to the description of how to install that mod. So if you ever get this on a mod, uh, try to get in touch with the modder or look into the mod a little bit and figure out why it didn't work. As you can see, when I did that, uh, Frosty Mod Manager completely disappeared, which... Don't panic. It's going to happen when it has an issue like that. So I just got to go back to my desktop and uh, reopen it real quick. Okay, so now we're back in Frosty Mod Manager. As you can see, tons of stuff is in here now. I got all these different options. And I can just apply them one by one like that and basically get all the stuff I want. All right. Now I'm going to show you the other place uh, that I get all my mods from. This is the Discord app, uh, Chat for Battlefront Modding. It's a really, really, really useful tool. There's tons of different people on here. Some people you might recognize um, that have been putting different things or different mods into this Discord chat. So where you're going to find everything is going to be under the Battlefront 2 2017 modding tab. As you can see, there's all kinds of stuff to go to there's uh it shows you the different kinds of mods it has like models and textures these are generally going to be just uh skins for the most part as you can see a luke skin a qui-gon skin arc trooper han uh, it just it just gives you tons of different kind of mods for uh for different skins you can have in the game 
So that one's, that's usually a pretty big one that people really like to use. There's one for graphics, as you can see, it changes like Kylo Ren's uh, lightsaber, looks more fiery, like a fire saber. It, it just changes, uh, it changes, you know, the graphics, it changes the effects, it makes, usually enhances them and makes them look more realistic sometimes it makes them look just stupid it just depends on what you're looking for but that that's where you're going to find a lot of that uh there's one for gameplay now gameplay is really interesting because it changes literally the way you play the game as you can see there's this arcade overhaul uh there's one for cross era arcade putting starfighter assault in arcade so these are the kind of mods that are going to literally change uh, the game modes and things you can do in the game. Then there's one for the user interface. This changes things like uh, text or just random things throughout the game. Like this changes all the text in it to uh, Comic Sans kind of text if, if that's what you're into. It, this will have things like that. There's one for audio, although there's not a whole lot of audio mods yet, um, but there may be more to come. That just changes audio within the game. Uh, the one for maps is pretty cool, though there isn't a whole lot on that yet, but I have assumed there will be a lot more. This just changes textures of maps and things like that. And then there's one called Shovelware, uh, where there's just all kinds of random stuff in here as well, like a, a no-cape version of Darth Vader, Red Darth Vader, uh, Super Leia. There's, there's all kinds of interesting things in there, too. Tide High Paddle Droid. Uh, so anyway, this is the Discord app. Now I'm going to show you how to download from this uh from this place. Well, let me do the. I'm gonna do the no cape Vader first because this is a little easier. I think this one explains itself, boys. So all you gotta do is click on this RAR file. You wanna look for like a RAR file or something, something that appears blue, because it'll be some sort of link. Uh, for this one, it's just no cape Vader dot RAR. There's one down here for the Jump Trooper Honor Guard, which is dot zip. Uh, usually dot zip or dot RAR is gonna be where the mods are. There's another one dot RAR. Uh, but let's go ahead and click on that. And again, it does the same thing like in Nexus. It pops down here. And when you go to your downloads, in your downloads file, there should be something like that that says no Cape Vader, which is good. And then you just go to Frosty Mod Manager, go to Import Mods again. And then in your downloads, just double click on no Cape Vader. And there's no Cape Vader. And then to apply it, we'll just double click it again. And no Cape Vader pops up. All right, so the last step as far as mods are concerned is to launch the actual game. Now, it is different than usual. A lot of times in mods, you just launch the game like normal, uh, nor like you normally would. But in this, you actually do it a little differently. You launch it from the Frosty Mod Manager itself. There's a button up here that says Launch, and that's what you're going to do. Since you did link Star Wars Battlefront 2 to it earlier, just to confirm that, it's up here, Star Wars Battlefront 2. So all you have to do is go ahead and launch it with your mods uh, checked so that you know they're actually going to be in it. All right, so your Battlefront 2 should have opened up as normal. Uh, if for any reason it did not, then uh, then something went wrong. You might want to go through the steps once again. Uh, but it should have opened as normal. And then just to double check, make sure I actually have my mods, although I kind of already know because I think he looks a little different. Just to double check to make sure I have my mods. Let's see if Vader looks weird. And yeah. Vader does not look normal. As you can see, he does not have a cape. <laughs> so that means that that mod worked. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. So, so there was definitely some mods that uh, that worked in there. So that's how you can double check that. And then you can play with your mods once, uh, once you've done that. And that's uh, all you have to do. Of course, each mod is different. Make sure you pay attention to the mod description. And it'll tell you exactly what you need to do if there are special instructions for each mod. And also uh, how to use each mod. Uh, last thing I'll say is if you do decide to use these mods on multiplayer, uh, I haven't heard a whole lot of people being banned for mods. It's not something I've heard of yet, but that is always a risk. So what I would recommend is to just play it in arcade and just mess with it there. Just remember if you do decide to play the mods online, which in the, for the most part you can, uh, just understand that there is some risk to that, although I haven't heard of a lot of people being banned, there is technically a risk that you could be banned uh, from Battlefront 2 by EA. I don't know if that's going to happen or not, just want to give you guys that warning um, that that is technically possible and could happen. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, I hope it was helpful for you. Um, let me know in the comments any questions you have and we'll do our best to answer them. Uh, but for now, that does it for me. I hope you guys have fun modding in the future and uh, keep watching. Make sure 
Let's go ahead and like this video, subscribe if you can, uh, donate as usual if you can, and uh, yeah, we will see you guys next time. Have a good one. I warn you not to underestimate my powers. <laughs> Do not throw away your potential. Don't force me to kill you!